In a pet shop exclusively for cats, an employee called So Yin works, who is passionate about these animals. After bathing and drying Bida Ni, the woman adorns her with a tie and, minutes later, hands the cat over to her owner, who has just come back from the mall with a load of shopping. While Soon Kyung makes the payment, So Yin holds the feline on her lap and, while playing with it, notices a strange presence touching the window. But when she looks away, she sees no one and carries on as if nothing has happened, even though she knows she has just seen something very strange. A few minutes later, when she goes out to throw the garbage away, So Yin sees Soon Kyung about to get into the car with Bida Ni on her lap, and with her is a little girl, who begins to pet the cat. Suddenly, while watching the scene, So Yin notices that the girl has disappeared and wonders what happened. When they arrive at their building, Soon Kyung gets into the elevator to go up to her apartment, but Bida Ni starts to get angry, as if someone was in there with them. Without understanding what is happening, the woman holds her cat so she can't get away and presses the button for the 11th floor. Upstairs, Soon Kyung's husband is waiting for her and, when the elevator doors open, he finds his wife's body pale and lifeless. Next to her is Bida Ni, who apparently hasn't suffered a scratch. That afternoon, while talking to her psychologist, So Yin says that she is working on her fears and has come a long way, but she still can't feel comfortable in enclosed spaces, such as elevators. The claustrophobia arose from a past trauma, where the young woman almost suffocated from the smoke during a fire, but the psychologist says that she needs to face her fears in order to get rid of them. As she leaves the office, So Yin spots a police car and decides to follow it to the building where Mrs. Soon Kyung lives. When she gets there, the young woman sees a policeman holding Bida Ni and goes after him to ask what happened. At this point, Jun Sok tells her that Soon Kyung perished a few minutes ago and the police suspect that she suffered a heart attack while riding the elevator with her cat. When she realizes that Bida Ni has no one else to look after her, So Yin decides to take the cat to the pet shop. The truth is that So Yin and Jun Sok have known each other since high school and, at the time, the young woman was in love with him. Before saying goodbye, So Yin gives Jun Sok her number so that he can contact her if Mrs. Soon Kyung's husband wants the animal back. When she arrived at the pet shop, the employee explained what had happened and asked if she could leave Bida Ni with the other cats until her owner came to collect her. However, Han Wei says that his establishment is no longer responsible for the animal and orders So Yin to take it home. So the young woman puts the cat in a carrying case to take it away and suddenly spots a scary little girl outside the store looking at her. Terrified, So Yin moves away from the door, but again that spirit disappears and she decides to take Bida Ni home on her lap. While walking alone at night through the streets, the employee senses that she is being followed and decides to hurry, but she has no idea that she is being watched by the street cats. When she arrives home, she introduces the new resident to the apartment and tells her that none of the rooms have doors because she feels ill in closed spaces. Just then, So Yin receives a call from Bo Hee and she reveals that she's going to adopt a cat, but the young woman doesn't think this is a good idea, as her friend has already abandoned an animal shortly after adopting it. However, Bo He says that this time it will be different and convinces So Yin to accompany her to the animal shelter to choose a new pet. Before ending the call, So Yin reveals that she saw Jun Sok that day and found out that the young man had become a policeman, but Bo He doesn't want to hear about her ex boyfriend and says she doesn't like him anymore. While getting ready for bed, So Yin uses a wand to play with Bida Ni and suddenly the cat hides under the bed. As she stoops down to look for her, the young woman notices a pair of eyes lurking in the darkness and suddenly the girl who started chasing her that day stretches out towards her. Terrified, So Yin starts screaming and, the next day, tells her psychologist what happened. Upon hearing this story, Yi Suk comes to the conclusion that her patient is being tormented by memories of the trauma she suffered as a child. However, she claims that this is part of the healing process and says that So Yin will get better soon. Later, on the way to the shelter, the young woman discovers that Bo He wants to adopt a cat just to attract the attention of men, as she believes it will help her get a new boyfriend. When she finds out the truth, So Yin feels disappointed in her friend, but Bo He promises to take good care of the feline. After passing a wall full of posters with photos of missing animals, the girls enter the shelter and Lee guides them to the room where the cats for adoption are kept. Seeing all those unhappy animals trapped in cages, So Yin is heartbroken especially when she comes across a feline who is apparently ill. While Bo He chooses one of the cats, Lee walks to the cremation room and puts the bodies of some eliminated animals into the furnace. When he returns to the living room, the young woman says that she has already chosen the cat she will adopt and so Yin informs him that one of the cats in the cage has perished. While she looks sadly at the animal's body, Bo He and Lee go to formalize the adoption documents and, just then, the door to the room closes. 
When she tries to open it, So Yin realizes that she's locked in and becomes desperate. Her screams startle the cats and they try to escape from their cages. While trying to calm down, the young woman kneels down and starts vomiting hairballs. Luckily, Bo He appears soon after and helps her friend up. After investigating the elevator's security camera footage, the police see Mrs. Soon Kyung being attacked by an invisible creature that apparently only she could see. While trying to understand the images, the police begin to suspect that the woman has suffered a seizure or panic attack, but Jun Sook is not convinced by this justification. That evening, at the end of her working day, So Yin is cleaning the shelves in the pet shop when she notices that the animals have started to get restless and once again feels a macabre presence approaching. This time, she looks back and finds no one, but hears a strange noise coming from the other side of the door and decides to open it to investigate. As she does so, the young woman comes across the bodies of countless cats and, out of the middle of them, comes a hand holding her ankle. Immediately, So Yin starts screaming and runs out of the store. As she gathers her courage to return to the store, Jun Sook appears and accompanies her to the pantry, but finds nothing strange inside. He then accompanies the young woman to her building to make sure she gets home safely and reveals that Mrs. Soon Kyung's husband isn't ready to take Bi Dani back yet. So Yin says she doesn't mind continuing to look after the cat. When the young man leaves, the young woman goes home, but at night she can't sleep because she is tormented by countless nightmares. In the middle of the night, So Yin hears some noises coming from the kitchen and gets up to see if the cat is all right, but what she finds is her father having soup, the main ingredient of which is bidani. At that moment, the young woman wakes up startled and is relieved to realize that the feline is beside her on the bed. However, when she pulls back the blanket, So Yin is confronted with the ghost of the cat-eyed girl and rushes to the kitchen to take her medication, as she believes she is hallucinating. In the morning, she goes to the hospital to pay for the medical expenses of her father who is in a psychiatric hospital, but tells the attendant that she doesn't want to visit him. Then So Yin goes to visit her friend and realizes that Dimwit doesn't like living with Bo He very much, as the young woman won't leave him alone at any time. Then, when she enters the closet to look for the feline, the lights start flashing and the door closes. Suddenly, the girl's ghost emerges from among the coats and Bo He gets scared. Hearing her friend scream, so Yin goes into the closet to find out what happened and realizes that the light bulb is burned out. While searching behind the hangers, the young woman also comes across the entity and, when the girl disappears, she finds Bo He's body. Immediately, So Yin calls an ambulance to take her friend to hospital and the doctors try to revive her, but Bo He doesn't wake up. So the nurses decide to transport her to the morgue, which is on the top floor of the building, and So Yin is forced to get into the elevator to accompany her friend's body. While concentrating to keep calm, she notices two bloodstains forming and removes the sheet to check if her friend is alive. Just then, Bo He opens her eyes and grabs her arm, causing So Yin to cry out in despair. Immediately, the nurses help the young woman to calm down and she realizes that it was all just another hallucination. When she gets home, So Yin has to prepare dinner and ends up hurting herself while cutting up the chicken. At this point, she takes a piece of paper to stop the bleeding and sits down on the sofa next to Bidani. When she sees the cat licking the drops of blood that have fallen on the sofa, the young woman finds it very strange and decides to take it back to its real owner. So she walked to the building where Mrs. Soon Kyung lived and climbed the stairs to reach the 11th floor. On the way, the young woman hears someone's footsteps coming up behind her, so she runs to Mr. Sung Min's apartment and starts ringing the doorbell. Just as the girl's ghost was about to reach her, the man opened the door and asked So Yin to come in. Seeing Bi Dan Yi in front of him, Sung Min offers her a large sum of money to take the cat back, as he doesn't want to see her again. The man says he doesn't care what So Yin does with the animal, he just doesn't want to have it around because he feels his family has been cursed since Bi Dan Yi arrived. According to him, his wife kept saying that there was the ghost of a little girl in the house and, upon hearing this, So Yin realizes that she is being followed by the entity because of that cat. Afraid of suffering the same fate as her friend and Mrs. Soon Kyung, the young woman decides to abandon Bidani in a park and opens the door of the transport box so that the animal can leave. However, on her way home, the young woman comes across an elderly woman walking aimlessly in the park and accompanies her to the police station so that the officers can take her back home. When they got there, one of the officers praised So Yin for her kindness, as most people would just ignore her. When the young woman gets up to go home, Jun Sok offers to accompany her to make sure she arrives safely. During the journey, so Yin says that she left Bidan Yi near a park because there was something strange about her. At this point, the young woman reveals her suspicions that the cats caused the elimination of their guardians, because Bo He and Mrs. Soon Kyung perished after adopting a cat. After hearing this, 
Jun Sok decides to start an investigation and calls the shelter where Dimwit was taken after Bo He's elimination. However, that night, Lee is preparing to give the animal a lethal injection and refuses to wait for a visit from the policeman, who says he will show up at the shelter the next morning. Just as he was about to inject the substance into Dimwit's body, the dogs living in the shelter started barking, but he ignored the noise and injected the cat in the neck. After the animal had perished, the man took a photo and put its body into the furnace. However, before he could light the flames, the door to the incineration chamber opened and Lee bent down to check if there were any live animals inside. Just then, he feels a strange presence approaching and looks back, but finds no one. Suddenly, a pair of arms emerges from inside the furnace and grabs his neck, dragging him inside. When Lee's body is inside the incineration chamber, the ghost girl turns on the flames and the man is burned alive. That night, So Yian is at home drawing the face of the girl who has been appearing to her when she hears Bidani's meowing. Immediately, the young woman gets up and looks through the peephole to see if the cat is outside. As she does so, she comes across the ghost girl, who approaches the door with her cat-like eyes. After the scare, So Yian walks away, but then looks outside again and realizes that the entity has disappeared. Just then, the young woman receives a call from Jun Sok, who asks her to accompany him to the animal shelter. Then, the next morning, the policeman picks her up from her house and, on the way, So Yin learns that Mrs. Soon Kyung saw the ghost of a girl in her house before she perished. The curious thing is that, ever since she met Bidani, she has seen the same ghost. Minutes later, when they arrive at the shelter, the couple start looking for Lee and find hundreds of photos of eliminated animals stuck to a wall. Among them is Dimwit's photo. Suddenly, the pair hear a noise coming from inside the chamber and when they open it, they find the remains of Lee, whose body has been completely incinerated. They immediately inform the other shelter worker about what happened and discover that Dimwit was rescued from Sangsu Park, exactly where Mrs. Soon Kyung found Bidan Yi a year ago. She reveals that although the cats in Sangsu Park are healthy and well-fed, some local residents have complained. As a result, eight of those animals were sent to the shelter last month. While trying to find something in common between the people who perished, So Yin realizes that they were all eliminated indoors and this further reinforces her claustrophobia. In an attempt to find out who made those complaints, the young woman goes to the municipal shelter and discovers that the complaint came from the Dong Ha condominium, located next to Sang Su Park. According to Min Jae, the owners complained that the cats were causing the value of their property to decrease, so they trapped all the felines inside a room and the rescue team only managed to find them two weeks later. Out of dozens of animals, only a few survived and managed to escape when the doors were opened. When she gets home, the young woman receives a call from her boss, who orders her to go to the pet shop immediately. At the end of the call, Han Wei spots Bidan Yi outside and, as soon as he opens the door, the cat enters the establishment. Furious, Han Wei catches the animal and locks it inside a transportation box. He then puts the box into storage and decides to kick it when the feline starts meowing. Even so, Bidan Yi continues to meow, so the man uses a piece of metal to hit her while the cat is still trapped inside the cage. While the evil man is attacking the animal for no reason, the door to the storeroom closes and the ghost of the girl appears to settle accounts with him. Suddenly, Han Wei hears someone's voice whispering in his ear and looks back, but the entity has disappeared. When he gets up, the girl jumps on his back and uses her cat nails to scratch him while Han Wei tries to open the door to escape. Minutes later, so Yian arrives at the pet shop and starts looking for her boss. At that moment, she spots a pool of blood dripping under the door and, when she opens it, she comes across Han Wei's corpse. She quickly leaves the store to await Jun Sok's arrival and discovers that Bidan Yi was inside during the attack. When he finds So Yian paralyzed with fear, the policeman decides to enter the establishment to check what has happened and, in the meantime, the cat walks towards the young woman. After finding Han Wei's body, Jun Sok goes to meet his friend and, just then, Bidan Yi leaves. The young woman is convinced that she will be the ghost girl's next victim, so she decides to confess her feelings for Jun Sok before she perishes. That night, So Yian pays a visit to the building where the cats were found eliminated and is surprised by the sudden arrival of the same lady she found wandering the streets a few days ago. The old woman then asks if the young woman has seen He Jin, her granddaughter, walking down the street and she soon realizes that the lady suffers from Alzheimer's. Concerned for the elderly woman's safety, So Yian tries to find out where she lives. When the lady enters the condominium, the young woman chases after her and accompanies her to her apartment. At this point, the elderly woman asks the visitor to go to her room to call her granddaughter, and when she opens the door, So Yian sees photos of the girl who has been stalking her for the last few days. Terrified, she asks what happened to He Jin, 
but instead of answering her question, the lady wraps a scarf around her neck. Soon after, He Jin's father appears and So Yin asks where the girl is, but the man kicks her out of the house and then attacks his own mother. While being attacked, the old woman begs him to leave He Jin alone, so the man decides to lock her in her room. When he realizes that So Yin has witnessed the scene of violence, the attacker opens the door and the young woman runs away frightened. Suddenly, he hears some meowing and is attacked by countless cats, who unite to carry out their revenge. While walking down the stairs of the building, So Yin meets Bidani and decides to follow her until she reaches the room where the cats were found perished. With the help of the flashlight on her cell phone, the young woman begins to search the place, but she becomes desperate when she hears the door of the room slam shut. Immediately, So Yin rushes to open it, but is surrounded by countless angry cats who gather to attack her. Seeing the person who took her in, in danger, Bidan Yi decides to help her escape and the young woman climbs into a boiler, but ends up falling while trying to dodge an attack. Startled, So Yin turns on the flashlight on her cell phone and comes across more bodies of animals that were eliminated during the massacre. Next to her, she finds a children's lunchbox and hears the whispers of He Jin, who appears crawling right in front of her. However, just as she was about to attack her, the girl recognized the scarf her grandmother had knitted and began to cry. When she was still alive, the girl loved to play with the kittens that lived in her neighborhood, including Bidani. When she found all those animals living hidden in that room, one of the building's residents ordered the landlord to get rid of them. What the woman didn't realize was that He Jin was hiding and listening to the whole conversation. So, in an attempt to save some of those cats, the girl hid inside the boiler with a group of kittens and ended up getting trapped in there with them when her neighbors blocked all the doors to the room. While climbing the stairs to call for help, He Jin fell and hit her head, so she couldn't get up and perished a few hours later. When she learns the truth about the little girl's tragic past, So Yin can feel her pain and tries to comfort her by putting her grandmother's scarf around her neck. She then hugs He Jin and promises that she will get her out of there. Minutes later, Jun Sok shows up and finds So Yin crying, hugging the girl's corpse. A few weeks after the incident, the young woman returns to the psychiatric hospital where her father is being held to make the payment and, this time, decides to visit him. For the first time in years, she decides to face her fear of elevators and walks down the corridor to the drawing room. After talking to her father for a few minutes, So Yin returns to the car and proudly tells him that she has managed to ride the elevator. Just as Jun Sok was about to start the car to leave, the young woman heard some meowing. When she looked under the car, she found a cat and decided to adopt it. So what did you think of this movie? Leave it in the comments below. And if you liked the video, like and subscribe for more movie recaps. See you next time.